Reformed Church. We were watching something um, on TV, and uh, what was it? No, I think you know, there was just like an app open on the TV, and uh, one of the thumbnails said something about one of these uh, big companies, these big media companies, and how they're putting out children's content that has like you know homosexuality in it and stuff. And you know, I looked at that, and w- w- we already know. I mean, if you haven't noticed this, you've either not been watching media much, or you know, or something else, but. Media today, these big media companies, they push a lot of stuff that is just not according to Christ and a lot of stuff that is not moral. Um, I won't get into the specifics and the specific media companies and everything like that, but I think we're all well aware of like the stuff that these big companies and big corporations are pushing. And even if you're not a believer, but you're sort of just like a conservative, you know, politically, um, there's been a, you know, a lot of talk about that recently, about the stuff that people push on kids and all this stuff. The funny thing is, though, that believers will look at something like that. These big corporations and big media companies, and they'll just talk about how, you know, they're always pushing, like, a liberal agenda, or they're always pushing an agenda, you know, with, um, that is, you know, contrary to biblical morality and all this stuff. And, and a lot of believers will complain about that quite a bit. You hear that all the time, believers talking about that, or even just conservatives uh, complaining about the, the kind of, influence that these companies are having on kids today and all this stuff. But if you can throw up Proverbs 22.7, I read you guys this verse um, quite a while ago at this point, earlier in the series, but I just want you to take a look at, another look at this verse in context of all of that. We can complain all day about these big companies and the agenda that they're pushing, but you know what though? So many believers don't accept the truth regarding power to wealth. And I'm going to make a correlation to that in a second, but so many believers reject that out and out. And there are, and you know what, the reason why they do that is because it's been taught so wrong before. So instead of just teaching it correctly and saying, you know what, I've heard a lot of money-hungry preachers before, but instead I'm just going to teach what Jesus did in this regard correctly, they just reject it out and out or they treat the, uh, the concept of power to wealth as if it's an unimportant thing. But uh, the funny thing is, the Bible says in Proverbs 22.7 that the rich rules over the poor. Now that, you know, is just a principle. It just means that the rich have more influence in this world than the poor do. And that will always be the case. Um, Riches and wealth give you influence. Now, in the hands of the wrong person, that's a bad thing. In the hands of the right person, that's a good thing. It's just that riches give people authority in the earth. And that's just, that, that is a principle from the Bible that we obviously can't refute because it's written in Scripture. The thing is, when you complain about these big corporations doing things that you don't like, and then you simultaneously reject the concept of power to wealth, you know why they're able to push that agenda out to everybody and why everybody knows about uh, these media companies? is because they have the money to do it. And so simultaneously, while we're complaining about these wealthy companies that are able to push their agenda far and wide, we're simultaneously rejecting our influence in this world by rejecting the power to wealth. So we don't have a leg to stand on to say, I don't like what such and such a company is doing out there, pushing homosexuality on kids. And listen, we love everybody here, but we don't agree with everything. And pushing homosexuality and transgenderism and all this stuff on kids, if you are one of those people that you say, man, yeah, no, I agree with you, I, I I really I, I disagree with, with, with their agenda and what they're pushing. It seems like every single movie that comes out these days has to have a gay character or a transgender character or something like that. And again, we love everybody, but we don't agree with those things, though. That's not the way that God created us to be. There are things that I do that I don't agree with, but I don't justify it, though, right? And we can talk all day, though, as believers about, oh, we, we disagree with the influence that these big companies are having, but the reason why they have the influence is because of the riches that they have. That's why they're able to do it. And you simultaneously, many of those same people reject the concept about being wealthy and that Jesus died to give you the power to get wealth. So you, you, you are cutting yourself off at the knees and you are reducing your influence and you have sacrificed your influence in this world and you let other people have it. And then you want to complain about it. You don't get to complain about it. You don't get to complain about big corporations doing stuff with their money when you've rejected the influence that God has tried to give you through the power to wealth. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
That's why people have influence. That verse says the rich rule over the poor. If you don't want to take the riches, someone else will, and you're going to let the Gentiles, quote-unquote, the unsaved, have the, the wealth, that's why they're ruling. That's why they have the authority to push this agenda without fear. That's why they're able to do it, is because they have the money. And so we, we, we can choose whether to believe or disbelieve the things that we've been talking about recently about the power to wealth, and we are sort of getting to the end of this series pretty soon here. You can believe or disbelieve that, but if you disbelieve it, then you can't complain that you don't have influence or that the church doesn't have more influence than that. Because the Bible says that riches give you influence. And if you've rejected the power to wealth, you've rejected the influence that God has tried to give you on the earth. And therefore, you can't complain anymore about the ungodly having influence on the earth. You have no right to do it. You have no right to complain about an ungodly person having influence. Because honestly, if you really think about it, most of the big companies and corporations that at least are vocal in America today are all very liberal. And, you know... You, if you're a believer and you, you, you vote Democrat or you're more liberal in your thinking, you know, it's, I would recommend you listen to our politics series. Just search for politics on our, on our website. There is a one-to-one -one ratio between the knowledge of Jesus and your politics. Okay, so uh, I won't go any further than that. But the, the typical today's liberal agenda does not match with biblical morality. Transgenderism is not something that God agrees with. God wants to transform you from transgenderism and that kind of thing. Homosexuality, you know, there's no one that this church loves more than homosexual people, namely because we don't love any person more than another. But that's not something that we agree with. Like I said, I disagree with certain things that I do in my life. I'm not going to justify it. I know God loves me. But uh, there are certain things when it comes to biblical morality that you have so many people with so much influence in this world, and they're just pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, and guess what? They have the money to do it, and we're over here as the church saying, you know, this is terrible and the world is going this way. You know why the world's going that way? Because everyone, that, at least one of the reasons, is because the people that have the money and therefore the rule, Proverbs 22, 7, um, are people that don't believe in the Lord and people that are ungodly people. That's why. So we need to think twice about whether we uh, complain about influence in the world when we're rejecting the power to get wealth. That literally is one of the ways that God wants to give you influence in this world. Obviously, God can give you authority as well, but um, part of the influence that he gives you in this world is, is wealth, at least the power to it. So uh, we just got to make sure that we, we, we're not <laughs> complaining about influence while simultaneously rejecting the influence that God wants to give you, because <laughs> that, that, that is counterintuitive, right? I just want, you want to throw that little bit of advice out there because it, it is so important that the right people have influence in this world. And you know what? The other thing that I shared with Pastor Zay Miss Kim also is that if you are on board with that and say, you know what? No, I see. I mean, I, I hope that even us here, right, when I just share what I shared, that we're seeing it. And you're like, yeah, you know, I see the importance of the right people having wealth in the world because we want the right people to have influence in this world. Man, what kind of world would this be right now? What kind of world will we be living in right now if all those media companies were run by believers that knew what they were talking about? You see what money does? It's not about the money itself. It's unrighteous mammon. It's about the influence God wants to give you in this world. And when you're broke, financially, you don't have influence. You don't have influence in the world when you're broke. Now, as believers, you're wealthy with the riches of God's glory. And I'm not telling you that what's wrong here is that believers aren't wealthy. What's wrong is that believers don't believe that they have the power to get wealth. It's what you believe that's the problem. Because once your believing is right, you're set up and, you know, you're going to see the manifestation. But, um, God wants, I heard someone say this one time, and I know that they were probably saying it in kind of a way that I wouldn't say it, but the phrase I agree with, the, the sentiment I agree with, you know what, as with all truth that God teaches us, God wants someone to believe him despite the persecution that comes with believing him. And one of those things that God wants to believe is the power to get wealth. God wants someone who is okay with the persecution that comes from being wealthy and believing that God wants you to be wealthy because it's going to get you persecution even from the church. But you know what, though? Um, I'm not talking about the love of money and I'm not talking about greed. I'm talking about influence in the world. And I'm talking about using your money generously for the kingdom of God. That's what I'm talking about, right? But I would rather have the Lord make me wealthy and give me influence on the earth so I can use the things that he's taught me in my mind to actually make a difference and make it go further simultaneously taking persecution, even from the church and ridicule and stuff that comes with it, than to reject the power to get wealth 
and live my just like everybody else financial life and, and, and sort of meet the status quo of being your nice middle class whatever, whatever, peop, whatever box people want to put you in financially and accept uh, uh, the, 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 the admiration of people and yet lose my influence. Because those are your choices. You can either go along with what everybody's telling you and kind of shy away from the power to wealth message and all that kind of stuff and lose your influence but gain their acceptance or you can lose their acceptance and actually gain influence and let's get this thing wrapped up here on this present earth so Jesus can come back. You're going to get flack for it. You're going to get persecution for it. And I'm not saying that when you teach on wealth you shouldn't always have those little caveats and always make those little rabbit trails to make sure that you're clear in what you're saying and that you're not teaching, the, uh, the, you're not teaching power to wealth in the sense of uh, the love of money and all of that. But you're going to get flack for it, but I'd rather take the flack and get the influence that God wants his kingdom to have in this earth than to get everybody's acceptance and lose my influence in this earth and just live my normal little like everybody life and then prolong the coming of Christ because people don't know the gospel. You get that choice. Again, you can believe it or disbelieve it, but as I said before, God wants you to be wealthy, to give you influence in the world and to be able to rule over those media companies and have more influence than those media companies. Um, and like I said, man, what, what a world we would live in today if the people that had the most influence were the people that knew Jesus the most. That is not the case today, and that is in large part, I believe, because we have rejected the understanding, and we do not understand correctly the empowerment that God gives us to get wealth in this world and the purpose for that and the fact that it's tied to the atonement of Jesus. So again, we got a whole series behind us on that, but we don't get the right to complain about influence when, you've, when you're rejecting the wealth influence God wants to give you. So um, I want to start out with that. It's so important. You, don't you see, like, wow, okay, this is actually, like, an important topic. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not just like, oh, money, money, money. No, no, that's not what we're teaching. There's a purpose for this, right? There really is a purpose for it. God wants you to be wealthy for a purpose. We hope you enjoyed this message from Reformed Church. If you have, please share this with someone else and help us get this unpopular message to the world. If you'd like to support Reformed Church, you can do so at reforminus.com slash give. Also on our website, you can take advantage of our free messages, articles, and even full discipleship courses. Start reforming your mind now at reforminus.com.